another common logical fallacy combination. By the way, you don't know what these are. This is when people use fallaciously framed arguments that sound like they're reasonable, but they're actually not when you break down their structure, often very easily, how they combine them both in the same statements. So you have to be very careful of these because people who are really good at trying to make others look bad verbally, they're really good at putting these together. Most of the time, they don't even know that they're doing it, but they do it very well. Next combination is the ad hominem and the red herring. First of all, what is the ad hominem? Ad hominem literally translates into to the person. Ad hominem logical fallacy is when someone attacks the person rather than attacking the point. For instance, saying, I don't care what policies this person has because they've been convicted of 34 felonies. For example, I just made that one up out of nowhere. The ad ho another version of the ad hominem is, well, I don't like black people, so I'm not listening to what you say. I don't like white people or you're a woman. Who are you to have an opinion? These are all versions of the ad hominem. You're attacking the person rather than attacking the actual point that the person made. Anytime somebody goes ad hominem in a argument, debate, or disagreement, they've already lost the high ground and they've lost their footing because they went to attack you personally, probably because they don't have any substance with which to attack the point. So be careful of that and be careful that you don't do it. The other one is the red herring. Red herring is when you introduce a new topic or a new point into a conversation in order to change the subject. That's a red herring. You want to see a red herring in action to listen to politicians. This would be something like at in a presidential debate, you ask one of the candidates, hey, a uh, person who's running for president, what do you have to say about people's attack on your policies when it comes to immigration? And they respond and say, well, instead of talking about immigration, what we really need to talk about is why more people come to my political rallies than come to my opponent's political rallies. That's an example of a red herring. They're completely changing the subject and ignoring the actual question at hand. The problem with the red herring, the reason why it's so useful and so potent is that often whatever they change the conversation to, the red herring, is often something that gets the other person to take the bait. They go chasing after the other thing and you forget about the main point that you should have addressed. So you got to be very careful when people do this. Again, I told you these are very good and very useful. So there's a personal attack, then changing the subject. For example, example of a red herring and ad hominem combination will be something like, let's say I make a comment. And somebody says to me, well, what do you know? Or you didn't even go to graduate school. And besides that, let's talk about your failed business. All right. That's the ad hominem because you said something about me personally. You didn't go to graduate school, so you're not allowed to talk. That's an ad hominem attack. You're attacking me personally rather than addressing the substance of my point. And then you're changing the subject to talk about something else that I'm probably going to take the bait on. That's the, what you're hoping when you use a red herring. That doesn't work on me, but it may work on somebody else. So you usually with a red herring, you're throwing out something that causes the other person to go chasing it down. And while they're chasing that down, they forgot about the thing that they should have held your feet to the fire on. Very, very pernicious skill. Be careful of these being used on you. Work on your game.